Hi students, welcome again to Lectures Club and today our topic of discussion is BJD modes of operation. There are basically three modes of operation, cutoff mode, active mode and saturation mode. It depends upon uh, the application of BJT, where you are using BJT. Definitely BJT is working in one of these three modes. For example, <clears throat> if you are using BJT as a switch, definitely BJT is working in cutoff mode or saturation mode. I mean when BJT is off, definitely BJT is in cutoff mode, no current is flowing and when uh, BJT is on, current is flowing and BJT is in, is in saturation mode. And the third mode is active mode. Uh, if you say that there is a variable input at VJT and the output is also variable, I mean with the change in input, output is also changing or VJT working as amplifier, then VJT is in definitely in active mode. So let's start our today's lecture and we discuss the details of these three modes. So what is BJT cutoff mode? To put BJT in cutoff, definitely base emitter as well as base collector junction should be reverse biased. So no current will flow through the BJT and BJT will act as an open circuit. Here you can see this uh, picture represents the situation. Emitter, base and collector and here we have written open. It means that BJT is working as an open switch or open circuit and no current is flowing from meter to base as well as towards the collector. So the base current is zero. Let's understand this situation very deeply. So what should be the cutoff mode conditions for NPN transistor? As you know, there are two types of transistors, NPN transistor and PNP transistor. So first we discuss the cutoff mode conditions for NPN transistor. Keep in touch with me, I will briefly explain you. So next uh, upcoming uh, saturation mode and active mode will be very easy for you to understand. So this is uh, the simple diagram of a PNP, uh, sorry, NPN transistor. Meter is N type and base is P type and collector is also N type. Now, uh, you can see that this junction between the emitter and the base must be reverse biased and this junction between the base and the collector must also be reverse biased. So, how can we put these two junctions in, in a reverse biased uh, condition? Let's say, we divide this base into two parts, something like this. Now you can see that if we divide base into two parts, it becomes two diodes have been connected with each other, something like this. This diode has negative part as emitter and positive part as base and this emitter has negative part as collector, sorry, this diode has a negative part as collector and positive part as base. So if we want to reverse bias this diode, what should be the voltage at uh, the meter side and what should be the voltage or potential difference at the base side. Definitely you are thinking that positive side should be at uh, the emitter and negative side should be at, at the positive end. Uh, in other words, you can say that negative side or the end type region should be at higher potential and positive side should be at lower potential Then this diode is in reverse bias condition. If this diode is off, definitely this diode is off. In other words, if we same is the condition for this diode, I mean base to collector diode. Here you can see that if we want to reverse bias this diode, definitely what should be the voltages at base side as well as, as the collector side or positive side or negative side. Definitely the negative side, the collector side should be at higher potential and base should be at lower potential. Then these two junctions are reverse biased and there will be no current flow between uh, the emitter, base and collector, I mean no current will come from emitter to base and will go towards the collector. So what uh, are the conditions of cutoff mode conditions I mean for PNP transistor? Definitely first was the NPN transistor and this is PNP transistor. Remember one thing, you have to always keep in mind the reverse bias conditions. I mean if you want to reverse bias a simple diode, what should be the conditions? First condition is that the negative side must be at high potential and positive side must be at lower potential. Definitely what will happen, this PN junction will be reverse biased. So either uh, NPN transistor or PNP transistor, you will never forget the concept. 
So if we want to forward pass this diode, definitely what will happen? Uh, I mean, what should be the conditions? The negative side should be at low potential and positive side should be at high potential, and the potential difference must be greater than. Yeah, do you understand what well, uh, what should be the potential difference? Yes, you are right. Potential difference should be greater than the barrier potential. Okay, correct. Now, now you can understand how we can uh, put this diode. I mean, so, so this transistor PNP transistor into cutoff mode. Here you can see that P is uh, the emitter and base is the n-type. So for uh, uh, to put this, uh, I mean this junction, emitter base junction in a reverse bias mode, definitely emitter should be at low potential and base should be at high potential. Then this this junction will be reverse biased. And uh, for base collector junction, so in the case this is P side and this is N side, definitely the collector should be at low potential and base should be at high potential. In other words, you can say base is at high potential as compared to emitter as well as base as compared to collector uh, then the pnp transistor will be in cutoff mode uh, the next mode is active mode uh, in active mode the base emitter junction is forward bias and base collector junction is also uh, sorry uh, base collector junction is reversed biased and current starts flowing this picture represents uh, the situation where you can see that if we forward bias the base emitter junction then can start flowing and base collector junction is same as the base collector junction was the, the same in case of cutoff mode we didn't do anything to base collector junction we just forward bias base emitter junction so this junction is reverse biased and this junction i mean base collector junction is forward biased then why the current starts flowing i will explain you uh, this whole concept in the last slide just keep it touch with me then you will completely understand the difference between active mode and saturation mode because many times students actually mix up these two modes active mode and saturation mode so keep in touch with me so here you can see that the meter current is not uh, zero now meter current is greater than zero so current is also flowing towards the base as well as towards the collector so now we let's understand the conditions of this mode so active mode conditions uh, the base meter junction should be forward bias so definitely this is this is the same ampere diameter. So what should be the conditions? Think about yourself. Definitely, you are thinking. I give you I give you 15 seconds. Just think about it. What should be the condition for? I mean, what should be the potential difference at the meter base and collector in case of we uh, want to do uh, forward bias this uh, junction and we want to do reverse bias this junction? Just 15 minutes to you. I mean, 50 seconds to you. <laughs> 15 minutes is too much. <laughs> Definitely, you are uh, thinking the same where, as I am thinking. Uh, the emitter is n type material and base is p type. Definitely, to forward as this junction, emitter should be at low potential and base should be at high potential. And to reverse pass this junction, n type region should be at high potential and p type region should be at low potential. Let's say we apply 1 volt. At the meter, just for the sake of understanding, we apply one volt at the emitter and two volt at the base. Definitely, what will happen? Uh, the potential difference is one volt, and which is greater than zero point seven, which is usually for the silicon. So this junction will be forward biased. And if we give more voltage as compared to base at the collector, so let's say collector is at three volt, then definitely this junction will be reversed biased. So in this situation, the BJT is working in the active region. Still, this is not a uh, saturation region. Just keep in touch with me, so I will explain you uh, in the upcoming slides. So, for the PNP transistor, definitely, uh, for the PNP transistor, P side is at the uh, should be at uh, high potential and N side should be at low potential. Then this junction will be at forward bias. And definitely, what should be the conditions here to reverse bias this mode? Definitely. The collector should be at lower potential as compared to the base. Then this junction will be reversed biased. Uh, uh, in, then the PNP transistor in this situation, the PNP transistor is in the active mode condition. Let's start to understand this point with the help of a very famous example of water tap. Where you will find this example everywhere on the internet. Here you can see that a meter is uh, the water is coming from the meter. 
base is controlling the flow of water and water is coming out of the collector. So when we will open this uh, handle, I mean uh, the handle of the tab, water will come into the emitter and uh, will come out from the collector. Similarly, if you more hand open the handle, water will come from the emitter towards the base and then will, it will enter towards the collector and more water is coming. If you keep on increasing, I mean if you keep on opening uh, the tab, more and more water will come from the emitter and will come out from the collector. A point will reach when you will maximum open this point. This point, I mean this handle has been reached at this maximum point. So, uh, at this point, maximum amount of water will come from the meter into the base and then will go into the collector even if you dismantle this handle from the tab this will may not and this will uh, not make any difference because maximum amount of water have already been entered into the base as well as into the collector because this diameter is the same so even if you dismantle this handle this will not increase the water now keep in mind this example and we and try to understand the same concept here in case of BJT. We take the example of NPN transistor. This transistor is, is, is in uh, active mode. Let me take the example of the active mode. Let's say we have applied 1 volt at the meter, 2 volt at the base and 3 volt at the collector. In this case, this junction is forward bias and this junction is reverse bias. So, BJT is in active mode. So, when you will forward bias base meter junction, definitely Electrons will enter into the base, red circles representing the electrons. Electrons will enter into the base and electrons will also go towards the base, uh, towards the collector, sorry. Electrons will enter from the emitter into the base and electrons will also move towards the collector. Why? Because base is at positive potential, so electrons will be attracted towards the positive potential, but base is lightly doped, very lightly doped as compared to emitter and collector. Emitter is very highly doped because the current is coming from the emitter or electrons are coming from the emitter and collector is lightly doped as compared to emitter but they are highly doped as compared to base but the size of collector is also huge because there are already uh, free electrons uh, collector have already its own free electrons and free electrons are also coming from the emitter so size of the collector is huge as compared to uh, emitter and base is very very thin and very very small as compared to emitter and collector. So, when electrons will come into the base, very small amount of electrons will be able to manage or uh, to remain into the base or may, they will make uh, uh, the combination with the holes and huge number of electrons will be attracted towards the collector because collector is also at higher potential or positive potential and 3 volt, I mean 3 volt, collector is at 3 volt and base is 2 volt, 3 volt is more positive as compared to 2 volt, so more electrons will enter into the collector. When you keep on increasing the voltage, let's say, let's say base has this, at this point base has 100 holes and 10 holes have already been filled. I mean, uh, uh, let's say, you, uh, let's say base has 100 holes. So, when you will increase more base voltage, let's say base voltage is not open one, potential difference has been increased between the emitter and the base. So, now more electrons have been entered. Let's say 1000 electrons entered into the base and only 10 electrons manage to make combination into the holes. So, 10 electrons will be in the base and remaining 990 electrons will enter into the collector, okay? Because base is very thin and there is a huge pressure of electrons from the emitter, so more electrons will be pushed towards the collector and also because of this positive. You further keep on increasing the voltage. Now, the base voltage is 2.2. So, let's say more 1000 electrons have been entered and only 10 electrons able to manage or able to make holes, able to make a combination uh, with the base or are coming uh, are coming out of the base. So, um, remaining 990 electrons will enter into the collector. So, now the base has 20 electrons and collector has 990 plus 990, 1980 electrons. Here, this part is very crucial. You can see that very small change in base current producing a very huge change in collector current. You can see that in active mode, with a very small change in base current, a very huge amount of collector current is also changing place. So, with a very small input, you will, you can produce a very high output. Uh, this is a, a very uh, famous example, or you can see very famous application of BJT. BJT uh, in, in is in 
BJD working as an amplifier. So you keep on increasing the voltage. So potential difference is increasing. So more and more electrons are coming and they are capturing the holes. A point will reach, let's say, for every 0 0.6 second, 10 electrons uh, capture the holes. Now when you reach at 2.0, 3, I mean uh, 3.0, when you will reach at 3.0, now the all completely 100 holes of base are filled. Base is completely filled now. And more and more electrons have been already entered into the collector. For every 10 electrons, I say 990 electrons have been entered into the collector. Now when you further increase the voltage, I mean you will increase to 3.1 or 3.2. Base is now completely filled. Base is not going to accept any electrons more. Base is not accepting any electrons. For before that, previously electrons were coming out into the base, but base was very thin. Electrons didn't find any holes for them or didn't find any space to uh, keep or move into the base. So there was also a very huge push off uh, from the electrons coming from the meter and the electron will be pushed, electron in the base will be pushed towards the collector and collector is also attracting the electrons. So electrons were not uh, able to manage or stay into the base because base was already very thin. So when you will increase 3.1, now base is not accept accepting any electrons. Okay. Now the base has gone into saturation. So keep in mind, the number of electrons coming into the base, they are going towards the collector. So if base is not accepting, accepting any more electrons, how collector can accept? Because collector is dependent upon the base, the number of electrons entered into the base, out of which uh, number of electrons coming towards the collector. So base is no more accepting the electrons. So the current at the base and the collector has gone at the maximum point or at constant level. So further increase in the uh, base voltage will not make any difference and the electron will throughout uh, the I mean throughout the PNPN transistor will be at constant level. Now we say that base and collector has gone into saturation mode. Here you can see that now the base voltage is 3.2 volt. Base is positive at 3.2 volt and collector is at 3 volt. So N tab region is at lower potential and P tab region is at higher potential and we can say that this uh, uh, junction has been also gone into forward bias condition. This is very, uh, this, this point is very important. If you want to use a BJT as a switch, definitely you need the flow of current or you don't need the flow of current. I mean you want a zero current or you want some constant value of current through the BJT. So you can achieve these uh, two, uh, I mean these two modes, cutter mode and saturation mode at the same time and BJT can work as a switch to. You can see that 2 volt is the uh, amount of uh, base voltage. I will increase the base voltage to 3.2 increase which is greater than 3 volt. So when you want to switch off uh, th this BJT, simply cut off, I mean switch off the base, definitely what will happen, no electron will enter the base and no electron will go towards the collector. And if you want to make this BJT to work uh, or you want a constant current flow of through the BJT, definitely the base voltage should be greater than the collector voltage and you give more voltage as compared to collector. So when base will be on, these two junctions will be forward bias and a constant flow of current through the BJT will take place. I hope you understand the whole concept. If this is true, kind don't forget to uh, like and uh, share my channel. I'll also uh, share the video to spread the knowledge and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe my channel because more videos on electronics and other technologies is also coming. So, see you in the next video. Bye bye, stay blessed, and don't forget to watch these videos.